So we are so excited to announce that we have another boss female joining us on our show today from NFL Films. And if you ask me where I wanted to be in 10 years, it would be in this woman's shoes because she's so impressive and has definitely worked on shows that you're a fan of if you have watched any sports, you know, features or shows on NFL Network. So welcome Shannon Furman, a producer for NFL Films and a PSU alum. Uh, Shannon, I don't know if you know this, I went to Wisconsin, so we have a little big <laughs> rivalry here. Um, but Shannon's worked on Hey Rookie, Hard Knocks, and All or Nothing, and many, many more, and we're really excited to have you joining us today. Thanks for having me. At least you're not Ohio State or Michigan. Right? I agree. <laughs> but I would say the same thing as like we talked about it. If you, I, I agree. <laughs> so first off, we just wanted to ask you, like, what was it like doing Hey Rookie this year and following Saquon from you know the Fiesta Bowl to up into the draft, going with him? Like, what was that whole experience like for you? Uh, honestly, it was like a highlight of my career because I love working with Penn State people to begin with, and I don't think there's a better human being out there than Saquon. So he was so open to all of our ideas. He pitched me ideas. I don't know if I've told you guys, like, the Gatorland scene was his idea. I, really I mean, love that. my boss was like, did you really throw him into the cages with alligators? You had, like, the best player in the draft. And I was like, he asked me if we could go to Gatorland. So we went to Gatorland. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that was great. Like, he was very, like, he was an active participant in the show with us. So uh, we're both sad it's over. <laughs> I know, I know. He's a producer but, in his own head, I feel like. Yes. He's ready. He's always yes. <laughs> awesome. Um, so what was it like for you um, at the draft? Were there any things that were – or was that, did anything surprise you? Because, I mean, I was definitely surprised by some things that I saw with the NFL draft. Being a Jets fan, I noticed it right off the bat, obviously, with Sam Darnold getting drafted. Yeah, I mean, we were prepared – for either Bradley or Saquon to go to. Um, yep. Both guys, when you talk to them, both thought they were going to the Giants. So I was like, how are we going to cover this? Because I'm only allowed to have one camera in the green room. Um, I still thought Say was going to go one. <laughs> I, in my head, he was going one to the Browns. There was no way that that wasn't going to happen. So when it didn't happen, I um, was kind of like repositioning my cameraman, like, like telling him real quickly, like, come just stand in between the aisle because both guys were – close to each other tables were back to back so it was a decent spot for us to have to cover two people but the call came so quickly like we I literally I moved him then I realized it was Baker that got drafted and since Saquon is friends with Baker I was like wait come back over here and get his reaction at least to <sighs> Baker and while the commissioner I think the commissioner had literally said like the Browns select Baker I don't even know if the last name was out and the phone started ringing and it was the Giants so there went my plan of having to cover two guys for like five minutes and figure out who was getting the call. Um, oh so, and then honestly for me, like my night, as far as the actual draft goes, was kind of done from there because I just went with say everywhere he went after that. Mm -hmm. So um, I waited out a little bit cause I wanted to see if Bradley was going three or four. So I waited as long as I could. Uh, but then like when they take, they like take the guys away and they have to go do a bunch of media stuff and everything. So we honestly worked for, I don't even know, I feel like it was like another three hours after that because everyone wanted to talk to him. So I don't think we got out of there until there was like three picks left in the first round when we pulled out of the parking lot at Cowboy Stadium. So he was stuck there for a really long time afterwards. I believe it. I believe it. Um, <laughs> no celebrations right, right away. Uh, we, we had a little party afterwards. <laughs> it was nice, but it took a while. It took a while. <laughs> and the baby was born before. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank God. <laughs> oh, that would have been a nightmare. Yeah, that would have oh, oh, it was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. It was a nightmare. 100%. Um, but we wanted to know, since you're a diehard Eagles fan, like, how did you think that the Eagles did in terms of this year's draft? And how do you think they're looking towards next year? I mean, the Eagles are set up great. Like, they have a young team. Um, they're, they should be top of the league for a long time. Um, I don't know if you guys know that I was part of the All or Nothing show this year, which was with the Dallas Cowboys, which came out last week. So my mom still tells everybody, like, I feel like you didn't get to enjoy the season last year because you're, like, kind of <laughs> cheering for the Cowboys because that's who you're working with while the Eagles are, like, doing a really, like, great job. So – um, it was an interesting year for me because of that. Uh, 
I was really glad they played the Patriots in the Super Bowl and not like the Jaguars I actually do have a lot of friends that work down there and there's a lot of Penn State guys that were on the team last year at least uh so it was good they played the Patriots but um yeah I feel like I didn't even get to watch the Eagles enough last year because I was in Dallas every single weekend um and I try to tell people, like, I'm not cheering for the Cowboys. I'm cheering for, like, the people, the humans on the team that I have to work with. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You try to be, like, relatively unbiased, and then you're, you yeah. still love the Eagles, obviously. But I get it. That's yeah. Um, so I was wondering if you could just tell me a little bit more about how you got into what you're doing. And Soph told me it involves a little highlight tapes and <laughs> – <laughs> Obviously, aside a hustle of your own, so so just some background there. Yeah, well, I was uh, graduated from Penn State and kind of right away got a job in marketing down at the Jersey Shore the first summer with a bunch of other college graduates. It was fun for about six months, and then I was like, "What am I doing with my life?" Um, so I wanted to get back into production. I missed production, but when I was sending out resume tapes and stuff, like I, all I kind of knew was like, I'm going to be the anchor for the local news or something. Like I didn't really know what else was out there at the time. Um, and then that wasn't happening. I was like, you know, sending resumes to Wyoming, West Virginia, like all over the place. And no, no one, no one wanted to take me up on my offer. So <laughs> I ended up, uh, spending, putting myself in some credit card debt, buying a couple of cameras, buying Final Cut Pro. I started doing wedding videos. I started doing like highlight tapes for local high school teams. And it was actually my brother's ice hockey team that my dad coached that I made a video for. And um, one of the father's best friends was a producer at NFL Films. So he passed my resume along. They hadn't hired in, I think it was like three years at the time. So it was a lot of like right timing um, oh, yeah. and just being prepared. Uh, and it was pretty quick after that. I want to say my interview happened like within a week. And then I waited for like a month to find out that I got the job. So I think it's 14. It'll be uh, 14 years in July. Um, this is my 15th season coming up with NFL Films. So. Oh, yeah, and I never made another wedding video again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a great story. I mean, that's what you hear. It's all about, like, right place, right time. And, mm -hmm. I mean, I went through the same thing. I, I was Erie, Pennsylvania, and Fargo, North Dakota were the two on-camera <laughs> positions that I got offers for. And nice. I was like, oh, no, no. So now I'm in Chicago producing at Intersport, but I um, – yeah, I just was like, there's just, you, you can't, you can't get me to go to Fargo right now. Uh -huh. We've done some work with Intersport. I know, I, I know. Yeah. yeah. Chicago's awesome. Congrats on that. Chicago's oh, a great you. city. That's exciting. <laughs> it's where I want it to be. So. Perfect. Yeah, <laughs> I do love it a lot. But no, I, I love hearing people's stories and just how they get to where they are because it is very relatable and everybody obviously goes through different paths to get to, obviously, to their position. Yeah. So and always use your connections. When oh, people yeah. are, especially in our industry, when people are afraid to use their connections, I'm like, no, like just be awesome when you get there. You yeah. Do whatever you have to do to get in, but then be awesome when you get there. Exactly. Exactly. And something I, you know, I follow you on Twitter. You're a big Twitter girl and I always see you with your two girl crew and I'm like, that is just so <laughs> awesome. And one of the questions that we kind of wanted to talk about with you were like, what are some of the challenges that you think that women face um, in this industry as it's been like a really topical conversation this year and like how do you handle that on an everyday basis? I think like the biggest challenge is probably just to be taken seriously but then I almost think we're at an advantage because like once you are I think you get more respect that way so it might be a little bit harder to kind of break in initially and get the respect that you deserve but then I think as a woman in this industry I find that like when I'm working on hard knocks and all or nothing and stuff, I think that like players respond to me better than like a lot of my male counterparts and stuff. So, um, I mean, honestly, I've had a really great experience working at NFL films. I spoke on a panel earlier, uh, this year with three other women and I I'm appreciative of the, of NFL films because of the positive experience I've had. And, you know, they, they told some other stories and, and things like that. I've never had a bad experience in a locker room. Um, I, like, I really don't have any stories of where I felt disrespected, but so I think the biggest thing is just maybe that it does take a little bit longer to, to just prove that you know what you're doing and you deserve to be there. Um, but then, like I said, I think that at the end of the day, you get more accomplished a lot of times as a female. 
I don't know. Yeah, my, my former boss was at Octagon, was at Octagon and mm-hmm. she is a publicist there. And I, I've never seen the respect that an athlete has given her. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Yeah. But I think that's so interesting. That's such an interesting perspective. Mm-hmm. You, hear, you can really hear so many different sides of the spectrum from a woman in the industry. Mm-hmm. So we were wondering, since you're an Eagles fan, are you a 76ers fan? I am. So what, what's your take on the NBA playoffs right now? Well, I'm a little nervous after that first game because I was, I was feeling pretty confident. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't know. I, I had us going to the Eastern Conference Finals easily. Uh, I was hoping the Cavs would lose that first series because I thought that would be an easier way to make it to the championship. But uh, I don't know. Game one had me a little scared the other night. So uh, Boston's going to be a little bit tougher than I thought. But the Sixers are like the Eagles, like a good young team that they're going to be around for a while. And they're, they're fun. I mean, Joel Embiid's fun. Ben Simmons, it's kind of nice to see him getting like fiery now here in the playoffs. It's a side we hadn't seen all year to him. Uh, just like a lot of guys down there, like TJ McConnell's even getting playing time still in the playoffs. Uh, it, it's been a long time. I paid attention to the Sixers last year when they started getting good. I got my hopes up last January and then, you know, kind of <laughs> fell apart. But it's, uh, it's a fun time to be a fan in Philadelphia right now. I believe it. I'm surrounded by Philly fans, so I, I, I'm on it for sure. I need some of that love to be sent to New York. Yes. <laughs> because I could use some help as a Knicks and a Jets fan. <laughs> um, what, so as your day as a producer, I'm sure obviously you go through, it changes daily, but mm-hmm. if you're in the office, what would you say your daily, your daily schedule is like? Yeah, like you said, it's it's literally different every day, especially like from yesterday to today. Like yesterday, yeah. we're getting hey rookie out of the building, so it's a completely different day. I'm working on top 100 segments right now, so like that's the kind of stuff that I'm editing. So I have like the segment. I I wish I could tell you guys what it was, but we don't <laughs> reveal the guys ahead of time. So I'm working on a segment for a player who's in the third, ranked in the 30s right now. So I've got his segment up on my Avid while I'm running back and forth to like a narration session because. With this last episode of Hey Rookie, it's just kind of a crazy turnaround time. So we voiced the show yesterday at, I'm sorry, what well, was yesterday, Tuesday? No, Monday. We voiced the show on Monday. So at 3.30 on Monday, we finished it. Um, and then um, we had to, we were in edits all day yesterday. So we're in like our audio mix was done around 3.30, our graphics and lower thirds and all of that. We checked that around 2 p.m. So I'm literally running around the building to different edit rooms, checking things, making sure everything's correct. Like, and then when I have a 15 minute break, I sit down and I'll edit my top 100 segment for a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's interesting as a role of, as a producer that you edit and you obviously Mm -hmm. go out in the field. Yeah. Um, That's yeah. No, I think that's amazing. All the skills. Yeah. All the skills are needed. All right. <laughs> Quick question. Mm-hmm. Have you ever been starstruck by a player? Um, people tease me because the people I get most starstruck around are honestly people from Penn State. Um, <laughs> like back, the funny story from, it was like 2005, I guess, when uh, Michael Robinson was our quarterback and Matt Leinart had just won the Heisman Trophy for USC. And I don't, know, I don't know if they won the national championship or not that year. But we were doing a shoot with Matt Leinart. And, like, I couldn't have cared less. And he's this good-looking Hollywood dude. And I'm um, just, like, whatever. And then Michael Robinson walked into the room. And I'm, like, panicking. And everyone's, like... <laughs> Shannon like what is the deal who is this guy and I'm like you guys don't understand like we have a bond and they're like we don't even know who he is like I don't I don't know what you're talking about so it's like honestly it's like like I had that moment with when and now Michael is one of my best friends (laughs) so that's kind of weird too but like yeah it's mainly it's mainly stuff like that I'm trying to think if there's any ever been anyone other than a Penn State person like I know like with Joe Paterno I was that way I got to meet Joe twice um and was terrified. Couldn't even talk to him. I was like scared to death. Like I, I, but he was very nice, but that's just, I was just scared. Um, I mean, when you're around quarterbacks, like people like Tom Brady or like even Peyton Manning, it's always kind of just like, you're a little bit in awe, but you got to get it together real fast. And, and, and I think we do for the most part, but yeah, for me, it's always like, just working with Penn State players and probably not so much anymore since they're getting a lot younger than me. <laughs> it's more like fun now, but um, those moments that I remember were like the first time I met Michael and the couple times I met Joe Paterno. For sure. Wow. That's a good, that's a good answer. Were you ever surprised by 
any player, like, by really liking him, if he had a bad rap or anything? Um, I mean, I loved Jameis Winston last summer. Okay. I mean, people can say any whatever they want about him. The experience we had with him was 100% positive. Um, from the day I first met him till the end of Hard Knocks. I mean, I, when Hard Knocks ended last summer, he – sought me out and came and thanked me for his experience and I was like you're thanking me like no thank you like you made my life so easy this summer I mean he probably wore he definitely wore more microphones last summer in the history of the show than anyone else like I mean we mic'd him several times a week and for every game he never got annoyed with having us around like he was great to work with um and you know I, I had preconceived notions going into everything from what you heard in the media mm -hmm. about him but I go off of what my experiences are. So that was probably the most recent one where I was, I mean, he, he was great. I, nothing bad to say yeah. about the guy. He made our experience awesome. So. Well, there you go. There you go. So since this is going to be an interesting season for you, I guess now that you just spent some quality time with Saquon, how are you, are you going to root for the Giants at all? Like, how are you going to. Uh, I'm the worst. I I really I, I yeah like I mean I don't know if I'll root for the Giants but I'll be rooting for him like I mean I'm hoping when the Eagles play the Giants he runs for 200 yards and they lose by one <laughs> that's what I'm telling everyone like I hope he has two touchdowns and 200 yards but they lose by one point like I love I, that you already have that answer planned out yeah. <laughs> I've been asked that's it several point. times <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean, even last year, like, working with the Cowboys, um, the Eagles' new offensive coordinator, Mike Groh, he was a friend of mine from the year I spent uh, with the Rams. And um, he was just, like, when he saw me in Dallas, he's like, no, like, you're here. And I was like, yep, I've been here all year. And he's like, who are you cheering for today? And I was like, don't ask me that question. You can't ask me that. And he's like, oh, my God, you can't be cheering for them. And I was like, listen – my personal life is cheering for the Eagles. My professional life is cheering for the Cowboys. So I can't lose today. I'm, I'm going to win either way. So I, <laughs> that's what I try to do. But yeah, I definitely get very like emotionally involved when I'm working with these teams and become a fan. I mean, we're not like, I always tell everyone, we're not like journalists. We're storytellers. And yeah. when we're doing all or nothing with the team, we're rooting for that team. Like, I mean, that's, we become part of them. We're mixed in with them. Those guys become our friends, the coaches and their families are people that we end up having lifelong friendships with. So we're not neutral. <laughs> we are cheering for that team that we're doing right. all or nothing with. <laughs> I love that. I think that is so cool. I really do. I love working on Sundays. It's my favorite part of my job. I, I love being at the game. I mean, now on Sunday, I probably wouldn't tell you that I'm like ready. I feel like I'm playing in the football game, but when I look back at it, like I like being part of the crew, like the camera guys and camera girls. Now everyone, like I like the game day atmosphere on whether it's Thursday, Sunday, Monday night. I just like being part of that. It's my favorite part of my job. Yeah, for sure. Well, Thank you so much for paving the way for us and taking time out of your busy, busy schedule to come and chat with us. Um, and we really appreciate it. No yes, problem. Thanks you for having thank me. Thank you so much. It was so nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Something out of this. Thank awesome. You. I'm excited. Thank, thank you. Have a great Thanks, guys. Thanks, you too. Bye. Bye.